Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Ashokan Hello. I'm Rachel Rosen, and I'll be your host today. Uh, as you all probably know, we've been filming this really fun series here at the Ashokan Center, and we're in Olive Bridge, New York, right in the Catskills. Um, usually, during this time of year, we would be saying goodbye to all of the students from the Outdoor Ed program and beginning to welcome all of the uh, campers for the music and dance camps. This year, it's a little different. All of our camps are going to be online, uh, so it's a different feel, but we love staying connected with all of you during this, this time, um, so we're happy you could tune in with us each week. Uh, this week, we're switching gears. Um, and usually Bill would be prepping the kitchen, getting ready for all of those Western and swingers, <laughs> Mus musicians. Um, but again, this year it's a little different, but he still wanted to get into the kitchen, prepare something really delicious for all of you. So we are gonna join him and his sous chef, Ali, in just a moment. Um, one silver lining here at Ashokan, since we haven't been having any large groups, is that we have had a ton of wildlife sightings. Uh, so just about a week ago, our head of facilities, Kevin, spotted this animal here at Ashokan. Does anyone know what that is? It's a bobcat. And while there is a healthy population of bobcats here in the Catskills, they are very secretive and elusive. So this was a really cool sighting to see, and it was right near Hoot Hill, where usually there's a lot of people, but since we haven't been here, this guy decided to come out and sniff around. Uh, you all might also be familiar with our two sheep, JJ and General, and they just got sheared. It's been super hot, so they loved getting this haircut. Here you'll see Maddie uh, shearing the general with uh, some handheld shears. And there's a huge pile of wool that came off of them. So they are enjoying the breeze. Look at him right there. There's JJ with a fresh haircut. Uh, so they're very happy to, to have all that excess wool off of them. Uh, the wool is probably going to go to a good home. It's going to get processed and cleaned and hopefully get turned into something really cool. So maybe you'll see a special on that in the next couple weeks. Um, if you've seen any wildlife lately, comment below and you know let us know what you've seen out there. Um, all right. I'm getting hungry, so without further ado, let's go to the kitchen and see Bill and Allie. Welcome to the Ashokan Center Kitchen. I'm Chef Bill Warns, the chef of the Ashokan Center Kitchen, and I'm welcoming you here to do a meal that I typically do for the first night of the uh, music and dance camps that we have. So come on in and let's make some food. So, on tonight's menu, we're gonna do a herb rubbed chicken, barbecued chicken. We're gonna make the rub, we're gonna make the barbecue sauce. Uh, we're also gonna have a roasted potato with herbs. And we're gonna do our kale salad, which I'm sure you all remember the kale salad. Everybody loves it. You gotta give a good massage on that, you'll love it. Um, we also have another treat. Um, the other day, we did a film on uh, foraging and we have some beautiful mushrooms that we're going to be doing. This is my sous chef for the day, Allie Britton. She'll be helping me along with this. And uh, yeah, there we go. So we're going to start with the rub. Um, and if you want to get the onions going and the garlic going, that would be awesome. Can do. Because we're going to saute that. Yes. All right, we're starting the rub now. For the rub, we're starting with one pound of brown sugar. There we go. Salt, I do to... Um, by eye, and we know she loves her extra salt, so. Extra salt. Extra salt. Um, all right, so that's probably about uh, maybe a cup, cup of um, kosher salt. I love to use the kosher stuff. That's what we use in professional kitchens. Um, next, we'll start with some paprika. And as we 
the, the stuff that isn't as pungent, we use um, a larger amount of it, as opposed to something like cinnamon, where I'll add, but I won't use as much. Granulated garlic, I use granulated, not powdered, and I do about three quarters a cup of that. Black pepper, about a half a cup. Hey, if you need me to taste anything, let me know. Absolutely. That's why I picked you as the sous chef, because I knew I'd have a good taster over here. We're going to also put some cumin in. Um, let's say about a half a cup of cumin. I like the flavor that gives. <laughs> Uh, we got our smoked paprika here, which adds a nice smoky flavor to the barbecue. We're going to go with about, about a quarter cup of that. Dark chili powder, about half a cup of that. Thyme leaves, we're going to do about a quarter cup of the thyme leaf. Granulated onion, again, not powdered. I don't like the powdered stuff, it flies all over. Probably about, about a half cup of that, of the onion. Some of the ground mustard, about a quarter cup of ground mustard. I know there's a lot of ingredients, but most of it you have in your house, and uh, it's gonna make this chicken taste real good. You know what, Bill? I never noticed that so much sugar went into a barbecue sauce. Yeah, well, it's not, it's, it's, with all the other spices, it kind of equals out, but it helps with the flavor too, and it'll marry nicely with the barbecue sauce. Uh. And then we got a little bit of celery seed. Mm. A little less of uh, the celery seed. And the last ingredient is some cinnamon. Just a little bit of cinnamon. Just kind of gives it a little different flavor there. So, and that will do. So you see all the different ingredients that went into that. Plenty of stuff here. And now we're gonna mix up our rub. I'm gonna put on a pair of gloves for that. So, um, let me grab my gloves and we got to keep our hands as clean as possible when we're working with food. We'll mix up this rub and then set it aside and then we'll start on our barbecue sauce. How are those onions coming, Allie? Onions are done, garlic is on the way. All it's right. Like being a little stubborn in these, uh, you know, in the peeling process. Also, the brown sugar has a moistness to it and helps it stick to the uh, chicken. When you peel garlic, Bill taught me it's important to smash the garlic before you peel it off. It helps the peel come off a little bit easier. There you go. Just like that. Pretty good. Um, that's exactly how I want it to taste. Little salty, little sugary, and not a lot of nice spice in there. And we'll start on our barbecue sauce. We got a little bit of olive oil in there, just a little bit to cover the bottom. And we'll get this going here. And for the ingredients for the barbecue sauce, we're gonna saute onion, garlic, then we're gonna hit it with some brown sugar, caramelize a little bit, and some apple cider vinegar. And then we'll add our tomato product. I'm using plum tomatoes and juice and tomato paste. I'm forgoing the ketchup um, just to get, so we don't have any of the high fructose corn syrup in the um, sauce today. That's just my personal preference. But you can always use ketchup. We good? Yeah. Looks you, good. Oh, you want, yeah. You want to save some of this for the mushrooms? Yeah, right we'll now? save a little bit for the mushrooms. All right. Hold on, let's let our oil get a little bit hot. I like to have a nice sizzle. So, here, you're going to want to hold off on that for a moment so we get a nice, get that oil nice and hot. What should that oil sound like? Well, when this, uh, when the onions hit it, it should have a nice... <laughs> You'll hear it. You will hear it. I'm going to let everybody hear it. I'm not fooling. We're gonna do it nice. We don't fool in this kitchen. You know that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> we like to have a good time. Here we go. See? We get a nice sizzle going there. We'll save, we're gonna save some of those onions because we're doing a um, we're doing that little oyster mushroom. The golden, the golden oyster. oyster mushroom afterwards, and a little quick saute with some onion and some garlic. I wish I had some shallots, that's nice too. Here, let me grab some of this garlic. 
And you can just put that in with that. All right. A little garlic in there. We'll grab our spoon. And we'll get the onions translucent and get the, ar the garlic a little roasted in this oil. And um, then we're gonna add our brown sugar and our vinegar. All right, our onions are getting close. They're getting close. So, is this, a, is this a, an original rub recipe that you made? Um, yes. It's it's just taking things that the ingredients that I like and and mixing them together. Um, everybody has their own little twist. You know, so you can add a little bit more of some stuff, uh, like if you like a little more cinnamon in it, so you can add those those pepper flakes in there um, for a little more heat. So this is just you know something that I do in my head, just a certain amount of stuff that I like to use of each ingredient. And it's I've been doing it so long that it's just you know it's just in your brain. In my brain, insane in the membrane. Wait, wait a minute. That is copyright. You can't use that one. You want me to start chopping? Woo! That know? vinegar is heavy duty. So how much sugar did I use? Make a mess here. One pound. I, no, I used about a half a pound of brown sugar in there, and oh, looks like about four cups of cider vinegar. I'm just gonna let that cook down for a little bit, and then we'll add our um, tomato product in there. So. Tomato product. When I use the term tomato product, I mean tomato paste, plum tomatoes, chopped tomatoes in juice, uh, all different, you know, whatever can I happen to have. So, but we do use a nice plum tomato here at the Ashokan Center. It's an Al Cacino. Very nice. Al Very nice. Cacino? No, no, no. Copyright infringement again. Al, <laughs> Al Cacino. Al Cacino. Yeah. All right. So we're going to let that go. And I'm going to go grab the chickens out of the walk-in. And then we're going to go light our grill. Back in five. We got a couple of big birds here. Big juicy birds. Yep, yeah, look at them birds. Nice, nice. <laughs> then we're gonna get those right on the table. We'll cut those up in a minute. I want them to light my grill, so I know my grill is nice and hot when I get out there. I'll show you how to take off gloves so you don't contaminate yourself or anything else. Using one gloved hand, you pull the glove off, and then you catch that dirty glove in your other dirty glove, then using your clean hand, take the inside of the other dirty glove, inside out, right in the trash. Clean hands. Now, why do you have to heat up the grill? Because you want the grill to be nice and hot when we lay the birds down. You want this part to be hot? The grill. The grates. We want the grates to be nice and the hot. Grates. Hot grates. Yep, hot grates. It looks good. We'll give it a few minutes. We'll go, go inside and cut our chickens up now. So we got our grill lit and we're all set. We're gonna cut a couple birds up and season them and finish off our barbecue sauce and we'll go out and grill them. So come on, Allie, come with me. You are going to, oh, we need our potatoes cut up. We're doing them in half and then in fourths. Wedge style. And then we put them in this water, right? Yes. Why do we do that? Them, well, that keeps them from getting brown, from oxidizing. This is what we do for the kids when the kid, we don't do french fries, we don't have a fry lady here. This is what we do for the kids when we do their chicken meal or their one of their meatloaf meals or whatever. We do the potato wedges and the kids absolutely love them. And much healthier than french fries because we bake them. So uh, we like to uh, try to keep as healthy as we can when we feed the kids here and the adults here at the uh, Shokin Center. So um, let me get to these birds now. All right, so here we go, we got them out. 
What I do is I like to take the back out and I go right down through the bird and I cut right through. And he's in half there. Take off that little piece and then I'll cut out the backbone. And what we do with the backbone is we'll save it and we'll make stock. And we'll use that to make our delicious sauces that we make. I also. Oh, and soups too, absolutely. I like to take off that little winglet there too, and I use that also for um, the stock. So we'll get these back on here. Um, and get these cut up. We only got three of them, so that won't take too long. Usually for some of the larger groups, we're doing between, oh, uh, probably uh, three cases of birds, and there's 12. 12 to 14 birds per case. So, um, and I like to get them in fresh and cut them fresh. Um, this way makes for a nice, delicious chicken. These are kind of big birds here. So they're gonna take a little bit while, but we'll get them marked, seasoned up, marked on the grill, and then get them in the oven. And last but not least, how are them potatoes coming over there? Great. Beautiful, beautiful. Really great. Awesome. All right, this is our last bird. Right through. You got to have a nice sharp knife for this. You'll also notice that I'm using a yellow cutting board with a yellow knife. That denotes it is only used for poultry. That's it. This knife is never used for anything but cutting up poultry. Same with the cutting board and then they're sanitized and bleached afterwards. So, there we go. We'll get our birds. I'm gonna put the birds on another, oh, we got one more winglet there. Uh, I'm gonna put the birds on another tray and then we will season them up with our rub. Taters are done. Beautiful. We'll get a colander, dump them into the colander and then we'll get them on a sheet tray. You get the colander, I'll get the sheet tray. Bam, bam. Where's the colander? Colander's where it always is. Over here. <laughs> Take a look. This is where we're getting to uh, a nice syrupy. The sugar and the vinegar are getting to a nice consistency here. I like to like make a little music there every once in a while. That's how I play my music. I play the uh, <laughs> I play the kitchen kitchen, kitchen instruments. Okay, you got that ready? Got them. And you got your gloves on, so I'll let you do this. Put them on the tray. Kinstruments. Kinstruments. You like Kinstruments. that. Kinstruments. All right, come on, come on. <laughs> Let's get these in the oven. Kinstruments, that is a good one, I like that. There we go. A little bit of olive oil on there. What else are we doing on salt. these? Of course, do not forget the salt. We got our salt right here. Um, There's a little bit of salt on there. I love that. Um, we'll do a little bit of pepper, which... Pepper? Pepper's over there. And I'm gonna do a little bit of... What our friend Mama Seal used to put on the... Mama Seal. She used to put a little bit of paprika on. Not too much pepper. Keep it low down. Bam. Bim bam. All right. That paprika's right over there. I don't know if there's much in there. We could use a little bit of, bit of garlic would be nice and thyme. Oh man. All right. A little bit of granulated garlic and a little bit of thyme. Oh, we got more paprika. It's smoked though. I don't want to use that on there. All right. Um, throw that in the sink so we can get that out of our way. Um, we'll do a little bit of granulated garlic and then a little bit of thyme and then we'll shoot those in the oven and it looks like I'm ready for my tomatoes. These are the Alta Cochino plum tomatoes, peeled and ready to go in juice. We're gonna add that in there. Careful, because that stuff, that, that sugar, that sugar and that vinegar, it's like, uh, it's like real sticky. And if that hits your skin, that gets on you, it's gonna burn and it's gonna hurt. But you know, that's part of the kitchen, so. All right, I'm gonna add some of my tomato paste too. Where are we at with this one now? This are we gonna use a little thyme leaves on there? A little bit of thyme? Yeah, I already put the garlic on. 
when you're working in a kitchen, it's got to be quick. You got to, you know, you're doing one thing from the next thing. So I'm getting that going sauce over there. We're getting the potatoes in over here. Bam, 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 bam. bam. bam, bam. Here we go. Potatoes are in the oven. They're going to go for about, oh, 45 minutes. And then we'll check them then. They usually do take just about 45 minutes. We got our sauce over here. You notice I put the tomatoes in whole. They will, we will buzz them later on with my um, immersion stick. I'll show you that in a little bit. We're gonna add some tomato paste to that. That'll give it a little thicken up there. Um, Instead of the plum tomatoes, you can always use ketchup too. I mean, this is just a very basic, very basic barbecue sauce. The one other thing I wanted to add into that barbecue sauce, um, I have it over here, is some of Ashokin's own maple syrup, which we have our own sugar shack, and we um, produce our own maple syrup. It's been hours and hours and hours and hours boiling off the maple sap to make our maple syrup. So we're going to add a little bit of this Shokin maple syrup to that to give it a little sweetness. Um, also because we had um, the brown sugar in there, but we also have the vinegar. So we wanted to have that little, little kick of vinegar in there too. So we're going to just let this cook down for a few minutes, cook off for a few minutes and let the flavors meld together. And now we're going to take our chickens, rub them, and take them out and grill them. So, stay tuned. <laughs> so, we're going to take a little taste. Taste time. This is the best part. It's a little tomato. Needs salt. Yes, we haven't seasoned it yet, though. So. Then it definitely needs salt. Here, took these to the dish room over that way. Um, no, over this way. Because I'm not doing any dishes over there. All right, here we go. We'll put a little bit of salt in. It's still got time. So we'll let that go for a little bit. I think we might put in a little smoked paprika. I think that'll be nice. We'll add a little bit of this in there. Remember, we have our garlic and onion. And we'll let that go and we'll work on our chicken this now. And then we'll come back to this and we'll, once we get the flavors right, we'll puree it and we can sauce up our chicken. All right, let's get to those chickens. Now the one thing you don't want to do is mix your chickens in all this rub because once the chicken hits the rub, then you can't use it anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch, switch trays over here. Can you get a piece of parchment paper for me, please? Sure can. Parchment paper we put on the, um, down on the sheet tray so that it doesn't burn the pan as much. And, and this way we save our dishwasher from having to work too hard because dishwashers are one of the most important, if not the most important person in the kitchen um, to help the chef. So, there we go. Now we'll just move these birds over here. Okay. Um, do you want to bring me the seasoning over here and we'll get on these seasoning, seasoning up these birdies? You don't want to cross contaminate, right? Absolutely. <laughs> So we'll just sprinkle it on. We got them seasoned up. That rub, we'll save that rub for another time. Uh, we can use that rub for other things. We can rub ribs. Uh, we can rub pork butts or pork shoulders. And do them nice, steak? slow and slow. Use this on steak? You can absolutely, absolutely use this on steak. But here at the Ashokan Center, when I do steak, I find most of the patrons like they like to have the chimichurri sauce that I do. Ah, you know the chimichurri, the right? Famous chimichurri. Or, Who knows that famous chimichurri yeah, sauce? Oh, yeah. You do. Or the horseradish 
cream sauce. Oh, they like that on the course. steak too, the man. Yeah. Cream all right, sauce. we're all rubbed up. Rubbed up here. We, spot. Yeah, yeah, Harry. You know what? Throw some on the bottom too. There. We we'll get them good and rubby. Rib rub. The old rib rub. There we go. See that? Look at that. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Oh my God. All right, we're ready to go outside. Get these on the grill. Um. Now, are we cooking them completely on the grill? No, we're just going to mark them on the grill, and then we'll bring them inside, start them in the oven, give them about halfway in the oven, we'll talk about timing, and then we'll put the, some, some of that fresh barbecue sauce, that homemade barbecue sauce up right on them, and um, it'll be delicious. Oh, you can hear that sizzle. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear that sizzle. You hear that? That means you're getting a nice good sear on there. This is the um, where we're working right now. This is, uh, this was built, this was built while I was here. I believe it was by Tony and John built this. Um, and um, I was always the one out here grilling, getting the food ready. So Larry ended up calling it Bill's Love Shack. So, um, and it's pretty nice. I mean, I've been out here when it's snowing. I've been out here in December grilling for, um, grilling steaks for the New Year's Eve camp. And um, yeah, it uh, keeps me out of the elements and I still get to grill all year round. So really nice. I love it. I love it. <laughs> all right, so now what we need to do is we need to go in. We got to get rid of this pan. Okay, okay. Because we don't want no cross contamination. You already talked Can about that, right? One? You want to be careful with these so they get a good sear on the one side um, so that you don't rip the skin. You don't want to rip the skin. I like getting them nice and... Uh, you want nice grill marks. Yeah. We're getting there. We're getting there. You know, we might have to do two parts. We might have to make this a two-part episode, you know? Would you like that? We could do something else, too. Um, I was suggested by Jay that maybe we could do... Um, Something for Northern Week and something for Southern Week. And Southern Week, you know we're going to do the etouffee, baby. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. The etouffee with the sausage and the uh, chicken. Delicious. We can finish this big meal today. We'll give these another minute on here. Um, then we'll get them in the oven. We can probably uh, crank that oven up. Well, I want to keep it at 350 because we don't how want to dry off the bird. How long do they bake for in the oven? Well, these, like I said, we usually use three to three and a half pound chickens, which go for probably about 45 minutes. Uh, we don't want to dry the breast out and the leg is usually keeps nice and moist. Um, these are big birds. I'm going to say these birds are uh, close to five, four, five, four and a half pounds, maybe five pounds. It's a big bird. Big bird. And uh, so these will take close to an hour. nice color on those birds.
taking breaks coming in from the grill. And the potatoes are looking good. They still got a little bit of time to go. I like them to be crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. Okay, so let me get these in the oven here. And blast away. I'm going to start leaving at 350 for now. We got a, we got a good 45 minutes and then we'll check it from there. So basically, Allie, what I want you to do now for our kale salad is I want you to prep our apples. We don't want to do the apples too early because otherwise they'll brown. All right. Just like the potatoes what we talked about earlier. Got it. Um, and I mean, if you had to do it ahead of time for a little bit, you could always put them in a little water with lemon. That will work too. Cool. But we're going to use them right away. All right. We're going to set them up with our carrots. We're going to get the pe carrots peeled too. Got it. Then we'll make our dressing for the kale salad and get to the kale salad. Right now, however, <clears throat> we're going to mix our barbecue sauce. And what I have here is called an emulsion stick. And this will mix it up for us and we can do it right on the stove top. We don't even have to take it off. It's great for all different kinds of um, soups and sauces and stuff like this and if you've ever been here at the Ashokan Center and been in the garden room in a class and it's been nice and quiet and then all of a sudden you hear you hear this noise going on it's us making something in the kitchen for you guys uh, it only takes a second to mix it up and we're done and now we have our sauce mixed up, and we'll put this away. Once you're finished with something, you always want to put it away and get cleaned up, and so everything's nice. And now we have our sauce mixed up, we're going to brush our chicken. We've got to grab that out of the oven and take a look at it. It looks really good. Let me just put this in the dish area over here. You want to do both apples? Oh, um, yeah. I think we might have some hungry folks. Right? Hungry folks. And now we are going to take the chicken out of the oven, brush it up, and leave it in for another minute or so. Oh, it looks like the potatoes are done. Let's grab those out. Oh, Here are hot the potatoes. Potato, hot potato. Crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. Beautiful. All right. So we'll put those on the speed rack over here. And we'll get to those soon. We'll move the chicken right over here. We'll close up the oven door here. And we can take a look at that. We'll get a brush. Um, actually, I'm going to use a spoon to do that. That'll be the easiest way to do it. So we got our legs here, our breasts here. I tempt them already. We want to be at 165. They're a little bit under. That's why I'm putting the sauce on now sort of like glazing it, and then we'll put it back in the oven. We don't want to put it on too soon because uh, the sauce can burn in a, at the temperature because of the sugar in it. And you can use a brush, um, you can use a spoon. I like to have it barbecued up. And we'll leave that in for until we reach our 165, and we're, we're pretty close to there, so. And this, this sauce will, with the sugars in it, and with the amount of time that'll be in for it, it'll give a nice caramelization to it. And it'll be nice and juicy. And looking good. There we go, we're done. We'll get these back in the oven. Right behind you. Always let people know what you're doing in the kitchen. So you don't burn anybody or bump into anybody or drop anything. There we go, back in the oven. All right, barbecue sauce is done. We'll take that off the heat. And next thing we're gonna get to is our kale dressing. Showing you how to make that. We're going to start with some apple cider vinegar. Um, I also do this by eye, so it's, it's, it's you know, 
depends on how much kale salad. And you can always have extra dressing because you can always use it for other things. This one, however, I'm making with, we got about, uh, about a cup of um, the apple cider vinegar in there. We're gonna use some of our honey. Are we doing bit. these shreddy style? Yes, we're gonna do these in the box. Right there. You need a demo on that? Here, let me demo Please. for you. We'll start with this side. Always remember to wear gloves though. I'm if chop you're, if you're not, well, if you're not going to be cooking anything, it needs to, you need to wear gloves. But we're sharing this with family, so it'll be okay. Uh, it looks like about a cup. We're going to do about a cup of vinegar and a couple, of, a little less than a cup of honey. A little bit of olive oil, maybe about a half a cup, and then we're going to do a little bit of salt. Gotta have that salt, right? Gotta have that salt. Extra salt, please. You ready? Absolutely. All right, here, a little bit of salt in there, a little pinch of that. I like, you know, I like to use the kosher salt. We're gonna mix this up. We're gonna put it in a bowl. Very, very, very simple dressing. But it's, uh, the vinegar will help, vinegar and salt will help break down the kale a little bit. We're gonna give a nice massage on the kale. Massage. We're also going to do some of those mushrooms. Let's not forget about those mushrooms. Don't forget the golden oyster. The golden oyster. The golden oyster. The golden oyster. The golden corral? No, golden no. The golden no, nugget. No, no. No, no, no. The no, golden right, oyster. Okay. All right. Our cabbage has been cleaned. It's not cabbage. Our cabbage? Our kale. Kale. Our kale has been cleaned. <laughs> cleaned. And stripped. Enough carrot? And stripped and ready to go. Yeah, that'll be fine. Don't worry, we're gonna put some cranberries in with that right, too. Right. Um, with the kale salad, whatever you have in the house, whatever you feel like using. Um, right now, take out the yellow ones. You don't want that in there. Right now, um, I'm gonna. Do, it's, it's summertime. We, we got some. We got apples, which is the fall, but it's okay. They're local. They're aromas. We got some dried cranberries. We got some carrots. Um, I've done it also with um, sun-dried tomatoes Pecans. and olives. Um, pecans. Peca you can add pecans to it. You can add goat cheese. You can add a feta cheese. I typically stay away from adding cheese to it just because we like to be able to, everybody to try it, even vegans, vegetarians. So this way we leave the cheese on the side and they'll be able to have that. So here we go. I'm going to have you massage that kale for me a little bit. There we go. There we go. And once we get it, do you mind if I, 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 I gotta be on camera a little bit for you talking to this guy. <laughs> there we go, see that? Really squeeze it down. Really squeeze. Squeeze it down. We actually have one of our kitchen workers who doesn't like to eat greens at all, but he will eat kale after it's soaked for two days. In Coca-Cola. So. <laughs> In Coca-Cola. No, she's just kidding. He drinks the Coca-Cola, he eats the kale. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm gonna dump it. Dump it in, dump it and crump it. You ever seen the Grinch? <laughs> Dump it on crumpet. Looks good. And perhaps we should bowl it up and make it look pretty. And I don't perhaps know, you a bowl. we should add some salt. We Salt's in the dressing, salt remember? Salt's in the dressing, just kidding. Craisins. Beautiful, there we go. Excellent. All right, I think uh, we're gonna do the mushrooms now. Let me just take a quick temp on these chickens in the oven, see where we're at with those. Remember, we're looking for a 165. All right, I'm, I'm transferring the bowl. over there. Yep, put it in the other bowl. Uh, we're about three, four minutes and we'll be good to go. Perfect, beautiful, awesome. Yeah, a couple minutes and we'll be ready to go. Oh Looks beautiful, I like that. Now, let's do a saute on our oysters. A bit of olive oil, and we said before, gonna get nice and hot. Here, snap crackle, we're gonna add our onions and garlic in, and then our beautiful, Locally harvested golden oyster mushrooms. Delicious. These were found in the town of Hurley by our very own Ovi Porta, who just might be behind this camera right now. Should we leave the stems on or they come off? 
stems on. All right. You heard her. Let's see if we're getting any heat here. Yep, sounds good. I like that sound. Look at that. Crackle. That crackle is hot. But you can't use that one either. It's a trademark. <laughs> you know what is fun? Is when I'm in here and I have to saute something. And it's usually not for the school kids. It's usually for a teacher or one of our OE staff that I'm treating really well. And I do a little thing like that. And the fling goes up and all the kids out there in the, um, the dining hall. Oh, look at the fling, look at the fling. So it's pretty cool. You know, give them a little stuff. So. It's like at a hibachi restaurant. That's like at a hibachi. Look at a nice bowl for this. So, although we can't have any campers here this summer, we're doing this to give you an idea of, you know, what's going on here right now. Um, we miss all you guys. Can't wait for all you guys from all the different camps to come back here and hang out in the dining hall and walk the property and just have a real good time. So let's work on those mushrooms now. Mushrooms tend to soak up a little bit of oil, so I'm just going to hit it with another, another little bit. Another little splash of olive oil. And then we'll do our mushrooms. Oh yeah. Oh baby. That's nice. Yeah. Put this container over here. We got a nice bowl for there. We got that there. Everything. I like everything nice and fair tongs. Those are looking nice. Hit with a little bit of salt. We have onions and garlic in there. I personally prefer shallots, but you know, you work with what you have, and that's what we have. So. That's what we're doing. Give it a couple shakes there. I used the tongs at first to move it around because they were a little high. Once you get that done, though, you just, um, you know, there's a little, I was listening to this great, oh, it was um, an Allman Brothers tune and um, from one of their live shows from the early days. And um, it was one of their standard songs, but they had stretched it out. And I was like, wow, I have never heard this version before. And at the end of it, Dwayne says, it's all in the wrist, and I love that. You know, the uh, me and Dwayne playing the slide guitar. So, for any of you who don't know that. But there you go, there you go. I think that's good. I think they're wilted enough, right? Looks good? Looks good. All right. Man, mushrooms release a lot of water in the system. Well, they sure do, but that's all precious juiciness. Goody juiciness. Yes. Where are we going? Right in here? Right in there. All right. you want it to read? 165. Is that for all chicken? All poultry. All poultry. 165. 165. Um, well, no, let me not say all poultry. Because duck is considered poultry. Interesting. And I wouldn't cook duck to uh, 165. So. There you have it. Live from New York. It's Saturday night. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> such a great full meal. It was awesome. Nice chicken, we had nice potatoes, the kale salad, perfect complement to it. It Perfectly was delicious. Perfectly massaged, the mushrooms. Mushrooms, delicious. We'll see, maybe we'll try this again sometime. That would be really great. And maybe I hope- Maybe do something for Southern Week. Hey, at there's an idea. You never know. And I hope if we do it again, you'll join us again and you can get a virtual taste of this delicious meal. Absolutely. From the Ashokan Kitchen to all you great people out there, we miss you, we love you, see you soon. Back, Back to, to you, you, Rachel. Rachel. Oh, oh, uh -uh.
Who's hungry after watching that? I think I got a little barbecue sauce on my shirt. Um, everything looked so good. That is a staple dinner whenever Bill is creating food for the music and dance camps, and now you can make it at home. Uh, below is the recipe. Uh, watch the video again if you want to follow along with Bill step by step. So hopefully you create that meal for whoever you're at home with right now. Um, I know Bill can't wait to begin cooking for groups again, but until then, you know, we're hoping he'll make another video, maybe during Southern Week, like he mentioned in the, that video. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in with us today. Uh, your support really means a lot to us here at Ashokan, so hopefully you keep watching throughout the summer. We're going to have some really awesome videos for all of you. Next week, uh, tune in for a sneak peek at the pewter shop and all of the renovations that have been going on there. Uh, Maddie and James have been working really hard. Um, to restore parts of the pewter shop that was originally built uh, in the 1970s. So that's be really cool to, to watch. We're gonna end this episode with some music from Chrissy Nagy and Noah Landis. So here's a sweet little song made just for Bill. See you guys later. I gotta hear this song. Hey, good looking. What you got cooking? Everything you cook is always good to eat. Hey, Chef Billy, don't you think we'll be showering down on all of your tasty recipes? And when you bake them beans, they really be baked on special occasions you grill us a steak perfectly marbled and medium rare when chef bill is in the kitchen nobody to spare hey good looking what you got cooking everything you cook is always such a treat bacon i rush into the dining hall before the bell even rings biscuits and gravy quesadillas maybe and if i ever want seconds i just go up and say please he'll make your hot fudge shande or a yogurt parfait rice and beans or shrimp etouffee anything that you wanna eat when chef billy's cooking it's always a treat singing hey good looking what you got cooking everything you cook is always so good to eat chef billy